Hello and welcome everybody. In this video I will show you all of the 10 currently available primary weapon models in Everspace 2, what their specific advantages and disadvantages are, how weapon variants, prefixes and special bonuses work, how you can improve your firepower with catalysts and of course how you can obtain or craft all these shiny weapons. And one very important gameplay hint before we start. Every primary weapon in Everspace 2 features its own energy buffer. Means, if you deplete a weapon's energy and swap to another primary weapon, you start with a full energy buffer for that weapon and your other previously depleted buffer will recharge in the meantime. Keep that in mind when choosing your weapon setups and fighting enemies. Let's start with how to obtain and craft weapons. Like every piece of equipment, you can simply loot weapons from enemies and containers. You have four quality tiers and on top of that some very special legendary variants. Progression through these tiers works similar to any ARPG like Diablo. As you increase in player level, you will simply find and loot more and more higher tier qualities. The higher the quality, the better the base stats like damage. In opposite to your other equipment, weapons don't provide base attributes like utility, firepower, expertise and so on. Instead, weapons gain specific perks like increased damage to targets of higher level, more damage when exposed to sunlight or higher mining yield. You get the point. Common weapons have no special perks, uncommon 1, rare 2 and superior 3, which are always randomly selected and you have currently no ability to change them. You can also craft every weapon on every quality level once you have unlocked the according blueprint. Check out my detailed crafting guide for a more detailed explanation. How do weapon variants, prefixes and set bonuses work? Think of different models for the 10 basic weapon types, which are based off the according archetype, but bring some special tweaks to the table. In addition to the weapon variants, sometimes we also have weapon prefixes in place, like swift, powerful or calibrated. These can occur on the basic and special variants. You can see all prefixes from the early access version on the screen, pause if you want to take a thorough look. The weapon variants can be very simple, like higher range, better energy efficiency or higher damage with more energy consumption. Some variants add additional behaviors, like the disintegrator variant of the beam laser that adds a spool up effect in addition to higher range, base damage, energy consumption and recoil in comparison to the basic beam laser. Not all variants are available for all weapons. You can either craft a base model of each weapon class that always comes with no prefixes or craft a random weapon using the improvise feature. This method can result in a base model or special variant, but not with additional prefixes. This behavior might be adjusted or changed after the 1.0 release. Please note that weapon variants shown later in the specific sections are based on the latest early access build. More variants and some balancing changes are to be expected. Everspace 2 also has some set bonuses in effect. Weapon and equipment can come as part of a set piece, like the Bloodstar set that will grant bonuses if you equip enough set pieces. The aforementioned set for example boosts Bloodstar weapon damage by 25% if you have at least three set pieces in total equipped. The Union Eclipse set improves weapon damage for 5 seconds by 30% after switching primary weapons if you have two pieces equipped. The last point before we dive into the specific models are the catalysts that you can craft and attach to any weapon, with the exception of the legendary variants. If you want to know exactly how catalysts work, again check out my crafting guide. At the moment we have the following catalysts for weapons available. Only one catalyst can be attached at any time and you can override it by applying a new catalyst. This will destroy the old catalyst with no refund. This gives you a lot of additional options to tweak your loadout to match your playstyle. Expect more catalysts in the future as well as some balancing tweaks along the way, because this list is based again on the latest early access build before full release. But let's take a look at the available primary weapons in Everspace 2. Pulse Laser. The Pulse Laser is a specialized 
anti-shield high energy low kinetic damage weapon with a relatively long range of 1700 meters for the base model. It is a low fire rate projectile based weapon so you have to deal with travel speed and some spread. The fire pattern alternates between all weapon hardpoints. It has the best energy efficiency in the game which it shares with the blaster and gauss cannon. But it has more than double the range of the blaster and no ramp up like the gauss cannon which also only has a base range of 1200 meters. Making it the most energy efficient weapon in its range class but also has rather low damage per second. Due to its specialized nature it is best paired with a high kinetic damage dealing option like the auto cannon or you are willing to strip enemy shields before finishing them with a missile which can cause you to run out of missiles very quickly with the exception of the bomber class. Because of its relatively long range and a lot of standard enemies featuring shields it is a great weapon to initiate the fight from a distance, pop enemy shields and then switch to a close distance high kinetic weapon because at that point you will often find yourself within a few hundred meters of the target. To pair it with an auto cannon makes for an extremely energy efficient weapon setup. You could also pair it with the scatter gun for close quarter fights at a very short range. A bomber pilot could also lean into the shield stripping aspect of this weapon and then destroy targets with a standard missile because the bomber class uses energy instead of ammunition for its secondary weapon systems. Overall a fast firing weapon with high range, exceptional energy efficiency, low spread that needs to be accompanied by a second weapon of your choice that provides high kinetic damage. Remember that not all enemies have shields in the game. At the moment we have a Jäger variant with higher kinetic, lower energy damage and slightly improved range available. Another variant is the Synchro Pulse version with higher base damage, slightly higher fire rate, a synchronized fire pattern and significantly higher energy consumption while also providing 200 meters less range. Beam Laser the beam laser is a hit scan weapon with no projectile travel time and spread. You hit where you aim, no target tracking needed. It is a medium to low range weapon with 1300 meters of range for the base model. It fires from all weapon hardpoints at once and has the second highest energy consumption of all primary weapons only surpassed by the railgun. The damage is evenly distributed as energy and kinetic damage, making it a fantastic all around standalone weapon. The base damage per second is not exceptional high, but that is somewhat compensated by hitting your targets more reliable due to its hit scan nature and hitting from all weapon hard points at once instead of alternating between them. Despite the lower base damage, this turns the beam laser into a high damage weapon at the cost of draining your energy reserves very fast. It is best used in short bursts, sustained fire will deplete your weapon energy in no time. The medium range of 1300 meters also prevents you from sniping targets from afar, so it is best accompanied by a primary weapon with higher range and a better energy efficiency to let the beam laser recharge between weapon swaps, because in extended fights you will usually run out of energy for this weapon at some point. Overall this is a fantastic weapon class for experienced pilots who feel comfortable in medium to close range encounters and can restrict their trigger happiness to counter the high energy consumption. The hit scan nature of the weapon makes it a great choice to quickly swap between a lot of smaller targets and take them out in no time. The efficient prefix with 20% reduced energy cost pairs well with this weapon. The only available variant at the moment is the disintegrator which adds a spool up effect and recoil, increases damage per second, range and energy consumption. Railgun. The Railgun is another highly specialized weapon in Everspace 2. It is the tactical sniper rifle with the by far highest range of 3500 meters, a whooping 1300 meters more than the next available high range weapon, a class of its own. It is also a hit scan weapon, means no projectile travel speed and no tracking needed, a sniper's wet dream. It also needs to be charged for its full 750% damage modifier. While the damage per hit is exceptional high, the damage per second is not. 
it also has the highest energy consumption of all weapons. Damage per second and energy consumption are measured by firing fully charged attacks at maximum possible speed. You can also hold charged shots without energy consumption. The damage itself is pretty evenly spread between kinetic and energy damage in slight favor of the latter. All put together, this makes for a fantastic weapon to initiate combat from very far away, taking out some targets and then switching to another weapon for close combat. It is a terrible weapon for quick target acquiring and destruction in the heat of a dense combat situation. The railgun is also tailor-made for the scout class, which is the sniper ship class in Everspace 2. The scout can cloak and has a damage multiplier the further you are away from a target, you get the idea, slap a railgun on a scout and be an absolute menace as long as you can keep your distance. Overall, a weapon that excels in its niche and can be a great addition to your arsenal or when you build around a long range setup in general. But due to its special nature, you always want at least one more primary weapon that can offset the downsides. Think of it as a heavy sniper rifle in a shooter where you need to carry an additional machine pistol or assault rifle for everything that is not sniping. Currently, there are no special weapon variants available. You will want to look out for the swift prefix for reduced charge time, making it the best prefix for this weapon. Another decent prefix would be rapid, which increases the fire rate, but this is outperformed by the swift prefix in terms of how fast you can land fully charged attacks in a row. Autocannon. The autocannon is a little bit like the counterpart to the pulse laser, a specialized weapon, this time for armor and hull damage with a lackluster damage against shields. It is a projectile based weapon with medium spread and a very short ramp up time before firing. The base range of 1150 meters makes it a close to medium range combat weapon. The projectiles alternate between weapon hardpoints, but due to its rapid fire nature, this is hardly noticeable. The autocannon has the second best energy efficiency of all primary weapons, very close to the three most efficient weapons. Because it focuses on kinetic damage, it is best paired with an anti-shield missile or another primary weapon with high shield damage, like the pulse laser. It is also a very good choice against shieldless targets like most drones, turrets and so on. The fast fire rate and iconic sound make for a fun weapon in close combat scenarios to decimate enemy armor and hull. The high energy efficiency makes it also a fantastic backup weapon while your other primary weapons recharge their energy buffers. The short ramp up and high fire rate makes it a decent choice for fast target acquisition and destruction in hectic combat situations like the ancient rifts or high risk areas. Although the individual damage per projectile is very low, the weapon class delivers a high damage per second. Overall, an iconic and easy to use weapon that can provide a lot of sustained fire before running dry. It does require some additional weapons for the low energy damage, but can be used as a standalone weapon against low level or smaller enemies where the shields come off very fast anyway. It is also a great choice against big targets once their shields are down, as long as you can stay within the rather short weapon range. Available variants are the Decimator, which provides higher damage per second with lower fire rate, slightly more range, but nearly doubles the energy consumption. By the time of this video, there is also a legendary version available, the Final Reckoning, that sports a unique feature by building up a charge that will increase the damage of your next secondary weapon hit by 500%. Scattergun. The scattergun is your equivalent to a shotgun in Everspace 2 and thus another highly specialized weapon. It is a projectile based weapon that focuses on devastating kinetic damage and only providing low energy damage to shields. It has a very short range of 550 meters making it the weapon with the shortest overall range in Everspace 2. The weapon can be charged for an additional 900% damage boost adding 9 projectiles to the next shot. The short range, high spread and focus on kinetic damage make this a very niche weapon that excels in dispatching groups of enemies at very close range. 
As much as the railgun seems to be made for the scout class, the scattergun is tailor made for the striker class, the close up brawler in Everspace 2 with bonus damage for every enemy within 500 meters. The weapon type has a medium to low energy efficiency and high damage per second, both metrics based on fully charged shots fired at the maximum fire rate. You can again hold charged shots without consuming energy. The scattergun can be a devastating tool in the hands of an experienced close quarter combat pilot, but is very much restricted to that scenario. It should be paired with other weapons as a fallback option for the aforementioned situations or used as an essential weapon for striker class pilots. Like with the railgun, the swift and rapid prefixes are very useful. Swift will outperform rapid and both prefixes will increase energy consumption. One available variant at the moment is the repeater that sports increased fire rate and a little more range while also consuming much more energy and providing less damage potential overall. The executioner is another weapon variant that greatly enhances kinetic damage while dealing zero energy damage, making it even a more niche option than the basic scattergun. Blaster. The blaster is basically a pulse laser on steroids, dealing higher damage per second while also favoring energy damage over kinetic damage. It also has the same very low energy consumption as the pulse laser and pays for these features with a severely lower range of only 800 meters, which is the second lowest in the game turning it mainly into an anti-shield weapon for close combat scenarios while also dealing a somewhat okayish kinetic damage, so it can be utilized as an all-around weapon in its range class, especially when you add a catalyst to improve the kinetic damage further. It is a projectile based weapon with medium spread, high fire rate and projectiles alternate between all weapon hardpoints. The blaster is somewhat an in-between weapon with decent all-around potential and excellent energy efficiency as its standout features. The rather low range prevents it from being more widely used, but for striker pilots or close range setups in general, this is a superior option over the pulse laser. The problem with the blaster is that you can find better options with better range for the job at the cost of usually worse energy efficiency. A gunship tailored for close combat might be a good pairing for the weapon class because of the energy devouring nature of the gunship's four weapon hardpoints. The Umbra variant of this weapon is a pretty decent upgrade with slightly improved damage, fire rate and 100 meter additional range. The roughly 20% penalty in energy consumption is not too harsh because it is based on the best energy efficiency for weapons in the game. Thermogun. The Thermogun is your dream weapon if you suck at aiming. It is the only primary weapon with heat seeking, homing projectiles that favors energy over kinetic damage in a ratio of 3 to 1. It has a medium to high fire rate and decent range with 1500 meters for the base model. However, you pay for the homing feature with the lowest overall damage per second and high energy consumption. The projectiles alternate between weapon hardpoints when firing. This gun was a killer in the early builds, but has been severely nerfed to justify the homing feature. In the latest early access build, this weapon is simply not worth it. The low damage per second combined with the high energy costs makes it more a weapon for warning shots rather than a satisfying combat tool. Good range and homing capacity are by themselves very nice features, but the focus on energy damage already hinders the weapon to become a good all-around choice. To further cripple it with lackluster damage and high energy consumption leaves it in a sad place. If they ever rebalance this weapon, it might become a viable option again. It would make for an amazing weapon in situations where you are being swarmed and become overwhelmed. There are also no special variants available in the latest build before full release. Flak. The Flak is the only primary weapon with splash damage, making it the ultimate uh, mining weapon. But apart from that, the Flak is a player's favorite for many good reasons. It is a projectile weapon with the lowest fire rate in the game and a low damage per second on paper, dealing roughly twice as much kinetic than energy damage. The hard hitting projectiles alternate between the weapon hardpoints while firing. 
the projectiles also explode on impact dealing area damage within 80 meters, dispatching whole groups of enemies within a few shots. It has the second highest range in the game with 2200 meters, meaning you can initiate encounters from afar and damage or take out tightly packed combat groups before they even get into their own weapon range. It also clears most mining nodes in just one shot. So maybe always keep a fleck with a mining modifier in your inventory to quickly gather crafting materials. The flex energy efficiency falls in the middle of the pack with slightly better than average energy consumption. This combined with the range and still decent energy damage makes it a very good all around jack of all trades option. It also compensates for bad aim with its splash damage or can take out specific parts of big ships like turrets while also damaging the ship itself. The ultimate two birds with one shot weapon. And while the pure damage per second is at the lower end, the projectiles themselves hit hard and make every shot count. It's a little like a long range shotgun with tight spread. Overall can the flag be used for a lot of builds or playstyles as main or support weapon. The versatility can be further enhanced by adding a catalyst that boosts energy damage, leaning even more into the jack of all trades aspect. Right now there is one variant available, the Penumbra flag, which has an increased fire rate at the cost of reduced damage, but still higher overall damage per second. It also comes with reduced range by 300 meters and slightly increased energy consumption. Gauss Cannon The Gauss Cannon is one of the hardest hitting weapons in Everspace 2, only slightly surpassed by the Scattergun in terms of raw damage per second. The damage split is also pretty balanced compared to other weapons with a little more energy than kinetic damage, making this one of the best all around weapons. It also features the best energy efficiency on par with the pulse laser and blaster. On top of this, it is a hit scan weapon with no projectile travel and no target tracking needed. On firing, the weapon alternates between all weapon hardpoints. To counter all these amazing features, the Gauss cannon comes with a unique behavior. For one, it has the slowest ramp up before it reaches maximum fire rate and in addition, the weapon spread increases with the fire rate, making it less precise in the process. The range of the weapon is also at the lower end with only 1200 meters. So while this weapon can dish out some amazing damage, it is also a bad weapon for fast target swaps or in situations where you need to kill a lot of enemies quickly. The ramp up time makes it more a great weapon for sustained damage on chunkier targets like elite fighters or destroyers. If you can adapt to its unique behavior, this can be a fantastic weapon for skilled pilots against bigger targets in close proximity. The high energy efficiency makes this also a great choice for gunship pilots with a medium to short range weapon setup. The marksman prefix can bump the weapon's range from 1200 to 1560 meters, while the swift prefix reduces the long ramp up time by 30%. Right now there are no special variants in the game available, but this can of course change. Coil Gun The Coil Gun is the final weapon on this list. This weapon is your ultimate jack of all trades weapon. High damage split in a 4 to 3 ratio between kinetic and energy, making it the best balanced weapon after the evenly split beam laser. Third highest range in the game with 2000 meters and a fire rate at the lower end of the spectrum. It is a hit scan weapon, projectiles hit instantly with no travel time or the need to track your target. The weapon fire alternates between all weapon hard points. So fantastic range, great nearly evenly split damage packed into a hit scan weapon with no special behavior or ramp up time. The perfect and best weapon in the game, right? Well, you guessed it, it is an absolute energy hog, draining your power core very fast. It has nearly the same power drain as a beam laser with a slightly higher damage output. It is still one of the best weapons in the game if you use it in short bursts rather than sustained fire. It is a hit scan weapon after all and in comparison to the beam laser it has vastly more range, roughly 15% higher damage per second and on top consumes a little less energy. The coil gun is best paired with some energy efficient weapons to let it regenerate its energy buffer after a weapon swap. 
a great choice for pilots who want to stay away from specialized weapons and damage types and lean more into a one gun fits all setup. The excellent range enables you to thin out enemy packs until you run dry and then swap to another weapon to finish the job in close range, like the auto cannon or blaster. The efficient prefix with 20% reduced energy consumption pairs nicely with this weapon. At the moment we have two variants available. The Prime Zappa offers a significantly improved damage per second with lower fire rate and 300 meters less range and of course higher energy consumption. And the Equalizer does sadly not summon Denzel Washington to kill your enemies but instead increases fire rate, reduces energy damage, bumps kinetic damage reduces maximum range by 400 meters with a slightly increased energy consumption. So this turned out to be quite a lengthy video and a lot more work than expected. But I hope you enjoyed this guide and found it helpful and worthwhile watching. A like, comment or subscription would really help this channel to grow and stay tuned for more Everspace 2 content. What kind of guides would you like to see in the future? Let me know in the comments. This is all for now about Everspace 2. Have a great time playing the game and take good care of yourself.